Good, so let's go ahead and do some more examples. I'll try and talk you through some strategies. I'll make up some examples. We'll run some proofs and uh, get a little more experience with direct proofs and sentential logic. So let's say we're given something like the following. P or Q then S. Um, let's say we've got R and um, Mm, let's see, um, M then P, um, and we've got R then M, and let's say we're trying to prove S. Okay, so just making that up, and as I'm making it up, I'm trying to figure also, you know, sort of a convenient way for you to prove this. Um, so let's take a look at what we're trying to get at, what we're trying to do in terms of the actual proof. So we're trying to prove S, right? We're trying to derive S f as the conclusion from these premises. So we're trying to derive S here from these premises. And when we look at the premises, we might say, well, where is S? Well, here's S right here. So how are we going to get S? Well, on a line by itself. Well, we know we're given the premise if we've got all this stuff, P or Q, then we've got S. So if P or Q, then S. Okay, so how do we get P or Q? Well, we look around. We don't see P or Q anywhere around here, right? So we don't have P or Q, but we do have P. Okay, so if we had P, then we know by the law of addition, or the rule of addition, that we can conclude P or Q. And if we had P or Q, then we could conclude S. So maybe we should write some of this strategy down here. So we're saying, I need S. To get S by modus ponens, I need, what do I need? P or Q. I don't have P or Q, but I do have P, but in order to get P, I need M. Why? Well, I've got M here by modus ponens, that would give me P. But it's trapped. Whoops, my crappy handwriting here. It's trapped inside a conjunction, the conjunction of R and M or P. Well, that's easy. We just apply simplification to get that out. That's no problem. We know that if we have R and if M then P, we can conclude if M then P. Then we just need M. How are we going to get M? So I'm not going to write out the rest of my strategy here. How are we going to get M? Well, we would get M by getting R, by modus ponens. Okay, we've got R here. We'd have R on the line by itself. Then we could, by simplification, and then we could just apply modus ponens to get M. We've got M, then P. That gives us P. By the law of addition, we've got P or Q. If we've got P or Q, then we could conclude S by modus ponens. So that's the strategy. So you go back and you find the thing you have, have to get rather, the, the conclusion. You find it in the premises and then you backtrack and you look at the operators and you see what operators, um, what are the main logical operators and what rules apply to which operators. Which rules will help me? Which ones won't? What do I need to do each step, etc.? That's the strategy. So the strategic part is to concentrate on the form of the argument, look for the MLOs, figure out which rules of inference apply to which MLOs, and what do I need to get in order to apply that rule of inference, and then go ahead and do it. So that's a sort of backtracking strategy that that uh, I think you have to do in order to do a direct proof. So let's go ahead and actually do the proof. And the proof again is basically bookkeeping. That's all we're doing when we do these proofs. Right? Because I've actually just given you the proof by showing you the strategy. 
And informally, that's that sort of satisfies me that we're going to fly right through this. But proof is about showing other people your work and showing them why they should believe what you've claimed. And proof should be gap free, right? Down here in my crappy strategy, we'll ignore it. Well, we might need that later, but I've got lots and lots of gappy reasoning. But over here in the direct proof, we'll have a no gap reasoning. We'll have non enthematic reasoning, as we philosophers like to say. Non enthematic means gap free. First thing I've done here so far in our direct proof is I've listed the premises. Now I'm going to go ahead and backtrack. So watch what I do here. Line 4, R. Line 2, simplification. Line 5, M then P. From line 2, simplification. Line 6, M. How did I get that? From line 3 and 4, modus ponens. I'm going to fly through this and then talk you back through it. So line 7, P, from line 5 and 6, modus ponens. Line 8, P or Q, from line 7, disjunct um, addition. Line 9, S. From line 8 and line 1, modus ponens. Game over. That's the proof. Okay, so let me talk you through the proof. So how did that happen? What just happened there? Whoa, is that the highlighter? It is. Okay, so here's the proof. Here's the conclusion. How did I get the conclusion? Well, I got the conclusion. We're gonna go. We're gonna work backwards, and then we'll we'll um, see what we did. How did I get the conclusion? got the conclusion out of this guy up here, out of the first premise. How did I do that? Well, I had, I used modus ponens, right? Remember, this accounting technique basically explains how you got every step. So what did I do? I used lines 8 and lines 1 by modus ponens to get line 9, which is the conclusion. So let's see. Um, whoops. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, man. Okay. So, let's take a look. Um, yeah. So, okay. All right. Over here, I've got how did I get line? Nine, I got line nine from line eight and line one using modus ponens. Why? Because I've got the antecedent on a line by itself, P or Q. That's the antecedent right there. And then by modus ponens, I can conclude the consequent S. All right, but how did I get P or Q? Well, I got P or Q here. It's explaining it from line seven by the rule of addition. The rule of addition, remember, if I have P, then I can conclude P or anything, P or Q in this case. Okay, so if, if I have any statement on the line by itself, I can join any other statement to it by disjunction, with a disjunction. So we've got P, but then the question is, how do we get that? The next question, we got it from 5 and 6 by modus ponens. Okay, that's perfect. You've got your M on line 6. You've got your M then P on line 5. You can conclude your P by modus ponens. How did I get the M? Well, I got the M also by modus ponens here, back up here. You had R then M, and you had R. So you got M by modus ponens from 3 and 4. How did I get line 5? I got line 5 by simplification of line 2. Simplification just means you take a conjunction 
and you can conclude either side of the conjunct. Either conjunct, rather. Either side of the conjunction. So here we had M then P, and we concluded that on a line by itself, on line 5. Okay. So the rest should be pretty straightforward, I hope. Okay. Let's do another example. Okay, so let's say we had something like this, and we were concluding not Q. Let's say the conclusion is not Q. Here are the three premises. Um, now, there are a variety of, actually, let's see. Um, yeah, there are a bunch of different ways we could do this. So if I've set it up correctly, yes, I have. All right, let's do the hard way and then the simple way. Well, maybe the simple way will be so obvious. Um, okay, so line one, we'll put the first premise in, P or Q. So this says not the case that P or Q, and that's a premise. Line two, well, this one is maybe too easy. Not P and not Q, and that is by De Morgan from line one. Write it out here. And line three, not Q, from line two by simplification. Okay, so that's the easy way to do that. So we had a rule, we applied the, or we, we had the premise, we applied one of our rules to it. Um, we recognize that whenever we see the negation of a disjunction or a conjunction, that we can apply to Morgan. Um, okay, so that was that was super easy. Um, let's, is there any way you might not have seen that? Well, you maybe could have gotten it by saying, well, look, let's go back and look over here. We've got not Q, we want that, and lo and behold, not Q is right here. Maybe what I could do is get S or M. In order to get S or M, I'd need not P on a line by itself so that, um, I could get S. If I got S, then by addition, I could get not Q. Um, I could get S or M. Then I could conclude not Q. So that's maybe the ridiculously awkward way of doing it and uh, takes extra steps. But let's go ahead and try. So we've got not P or Q. This is not a great example. Sorry, guys. Premise, line two, not P and not Q from line one to Morgan, line three, uh, let's say not P, and you, maybe you didn't notice, this is where the <laughs> strategy came in, that you had the conclusion right there, you didn't notice, let's say, you went ahead and different, did it a different way. From line two, by simplification, you got not P, let's say then on line four, and I'm going to introduce the premise here, so do it slightly differently, right, because I was introducing all the premises in one go. So line four is just not P. If if not P, then S as a premise. Line five, I've got S. And S I got by lines three and four modus ponens. Uh, line, let's see, where are we in the screen? I'll go over here. Line six. Um, where are we? We've got S or M from line 5 by addition. And then line 7, we'll introduce the premise S or M, then not Q. That's a premise. And line 8, then not Q. And that's from line 6 and 7 by modus ponens. Okay, so. Here we've got two different direct proofs of the same the validity of the argument, all right? So the same same thing. Okay. But notice that one is ridiculously long. It's eight steps. Uh, the other is just three steps. And they're both fine. So both proofs work. Um, Number two, the second proof has all this redundancy built in because you didn't notice that you already had not Q. These things happen. 
Um, you might have been deceived by your initial setup, by your strategy, et cetera. But you can see there are multiple ways. The purpose, really, of this was to show you that there are multiple ways of doing direct proofs for, um, for the validity of an argument. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So I could talk you back through either of these proofs, but as an exercise, which, why don't you just pause and look at the proofs and uh, if you can read my horrendous, messy handwriting, to see how you would reconstruct each of those steps. Remember how to read these. We've got the, the number of the line, we've got the schema itself, and then the justification of, of each line um, on the right-hand side. Okay, so let's go, go ahead and do another. Um, let's see, P or Q or let's say M. And then we've got M then S. And we've got not S and let's say uh, LMNOPQRR. Good. Okay, so let's say we're trying to prove, what are we trying to get here? Um, let's say we're trying to get P or Q or R. Okay, so now here's going to be, what we're going to have here is another way to do sort of lots of different sort of paths to this proof. Um, so there's lots of ways to prove this. Let's go ahead and do one and then maybe you can come up with another by yourself. So line one, I'll introduce a premise, P or Q or M. So notice I'm not talking you through my strategy anymore. I hope you can kind of see that for yourself at this point. Line three, not S and R premise. So last time I didn't introduce the premises right away, just jumped right into the proof and used them as I needed them. And that's often good, but um, let's go, go ahead and do it this way anyway. Line four, now, so what I need is I need some way to get P and Q. Let's say, this is my strategy here. I need some way to get P and Q on a line by itself. Okay, so if I get P and Q on a line by itself, then by addition I can get not R or R or R added by by well by the rule of addition. Um, I notice that I've got P or Q trapped inside this disjunction. Um, by disjunctive syllogism, if I had not M, I could conclude P or Q. How would I get not M? Well, one way would be by modus tollens. Uh, modus tollens using the not S. So if I have S, sorry, not S on a line by itself, and I have M then S, I can, by modus tollens, show that not M. So let's see. So go. For example, right here from line three, by simplification, I get not S on a line by itself. On line six, I get not M by four and two modus tollens. So if you're forgetting modus tollens, modus tollens says it's P then Q and not Q, then not P. Okay. And you should have those rules down by now. So I've got not M, so now, fortunately, line six, I can conclude P or Q. How did I get that? I got that, I don't need the parentheses, but I got that from lines five and one, disjunctive syllogism. And line seven, I get, what do I get? P or Q or R from line six by addition. Okay, see if you can come up with another way of doing that proof.